President Trump calling on New York City and other Democrat-run cities to activate the National Guard after days of destruction. So New York's mayor uh, refused to call them in. Uh, but we did see a mostly calm night uh, there with an 8 p.m. curfew here in New York. The question is, is it over now? Can we look forward to this from now on? Joining us live, 30-year veteran of the Nutley, New Jersey Police Department, right across the river, Steve Rogers. Steve, thanks for coming on. Uh, it was just fantastic to come into work and see cops and, and no looters and rioters in the streets. Well, you know, the one thing that is uh, quite upsetting is that Mayor de Blasio and Governor Cuomo are crying foul against the president for suggesting that he bring troops in. They're crying foul against the police. And yet the people in the neighborhoods of their city are crying, help us, help us, help us. And uh, the help is uh, certainly getting there by reason of the police doing the best they could under the most extraordinary circumstances. Right. But it is important that these military troops come in to restore order. I hope it stays. I hope it declines. But I'm not very optimistic. Steve, you know, you spent 30 years on the force in New Jersey. Um, I think a lot of people in this country agree that there are bad apples in, in any situation, in any career, in any job, in any profession. Obviously, Derek Chauvin, one of them. Um, what is it like to be a police officer and what you're seeing right now? I mean, the unimaginable videos, officers getting run over in the streets, getting shot. Tell me, tell me what this is like. It is, a, it is a horrible feeling. I mean, when you're out there, you're focused on doing your job. But what's going on in your mind is that, will our political leadership back us? Will they give us the tools we need? Will they let us do our job? And we have seen in many cases, especially in Minneapolis, when the mayor of that city on the first night had the police stand down and surrender and run and watch his police headquarters burn down. That was the trigger of what we're seeing across this country. Those cops mm. need the backing of their political leadership. So, you know, New York's had a few really rough nights until last night. Uh, the governor came down really hard uh, on the mayor for that and also the NYPD, and there was a back and forth. Let's take a listen. The NYPD and the mayor did not do their job last night. They're out there giving their blood to keep the city safe. And for a governor to be sitting in his office saying that we're not doing a good job, I'm outraged. You think the mayor deserves most of that criticism, not the NYPD? The mayor does, and so the governor himself does. Look, the mm. NYPD, they're undermanned. They're being overwhelmed with numbers by, by not protesters. There's a distinction. Right. But by those anarchists. And they need to bring overwhelming force, dominant force, as the president said. And look, we're not talking about excessive force. We're talking about numbers. The governor and the mayor needs to give the cops the tools they need in order to put this, this insurrection down. That's what it is. Yeah, what don't people at home know about the relationship between law enforcement officers and their leaders, the mayor and the governor? Look, the, uh, uh, the people in, in the neighborhoods and the police, they want good police community relations. They want to work together. But it's this rhetoric that's coming out of the mouths of governors and mayors who, by the way, have utterly failed in addressing this problem. This problem should have been addressed the first night. When Mayor Giuliani was uh, mayor of that city, none of this would have gone on. He had strategy set up proactive to prevent these things from happening. And when they happened, he brought overwhelming force okay. in and made arrest the first night. And talk about, I mean, it's, it's so interesting to me how you can have a mayor and you can have a police force of 40,000 like the NYPD. They don't get along. And the NYPD doesn't feel like de Blasio has their back. And that causes them to not really want to stick their neck out very far. Because wh why would you want to work very hard for somebody that doesn't support you? Well, I've always said uh, cops can enforce the law and then they can enforce the law. And right now, those police officers' lives are in danger, not necessarily because of the uh, confrontations they're having. They're in danger because of their political leadership. They're not providing the tools. Yeah. They're armchair generals. It's easy to sit on a chair and criticize. But the <laughs> mayor and the governor ought to go on the front lines with those cops and see what it's like. 100%. Totally agree with that. Steve, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. My pleasure. 11 minutes after.